Hi, we're the Swensons, the family behind Let's Adventure Some More. And this year we decided to ditch our San Francisco Bay Area lifestyle for a trip around the world. This is for week 16 on the North Island of New Zealand. We are finally out of remote uh, lands and able to upload some videos of our time in New Zealand. Sorry for the delay, but hi from New Zealand. <laughs> and we're gonna kick this one off with this country at a glance. New Zealand is an island country 900 miles away from Australia. It is made up of two islands, South Island and a North Island. Wellington is the capital of New Zealand, but Auckland is the largest city. The official language is in New Zealand are English and Māori. Hobbit and a lot of the wings children will film you. New Zealanders have to drive on the left side of the road. Since New Zealand is so remote, it was one of the last countries to be founded and built. For New Zealand, we decided to go full tourist and do everything the, the way that the tourists do it. So we, our plan was to go from the North Island to the South Island. We picked up a camper van um, and that way all, all five of us could be in a, uh, what do they call it? It's the uh, self-contained vehicle. And by doing that, we could go anywhere we wanted and we could utilize their amazing freedom camping, which means that if it's not private land and if you're a self-contained vehicle uh, and it's not posted that you can't be there, you can pretty much camp anywhere you like. And so uh, because we had a toilet and we had the beds and we had Gray water contained. Gray water contained. We had the freedom to camp just about anywhere we wanted to. And that's pretty much how the best way to do New Zealand. I do know there's people who drive and stay in hotels, but for us, it was so great just to have the freedom to drive somewhere after lunch, after dinner, and keep driving, um, or stopping and pulling over and making lunch, and then continuing on. It's just really efficient way, the way that New Zealand is set up to be able to do that. So we were able to use an app that William found that would list out all of the camping sites, ones that cost money, like a holiday park, ones that are a little bit cheaper, they are run by the Department of Conservation of New Zealand. The DOC. DOC, and then some that were just simply free, simply because they had a toilet and that's about it. And so we tried to stick with the free ones because we were traveling during because it's our favorite price ever <laughs> because we were traveling during high season the camper van was definitely expensive and it was definitely a treat so being able to not have to pay additional for camping spots was a mandatory to stay with closer yeah. within our budget yeah plus uh, we got to go out farther and see more things and it was uh we like the freedom of not being stuck merely on the route, uh, although it was more efficient to be closer to the route, but we got to do some things that were just amazing that um, we wouldn't have been able to do if we were in a hotel. Yeah, it was great. And just waking up in the middle of nowhere, um, even though it was high season, there was only a few camping spots that we had that were really Cranked. full of camper vans, but most of them only had a few, and so you definitely feel like you're by yourself and remote land is gorgeous. Not everyone knows what gray water is. I didn't mention black water, but let me just quickly go through that. Any water that you've used that's no longer fresh drinkable water is considered gray water. So the sink in the camper van, once you've washed dishes, it goes down into a basin, that's gray water. And then likewise, uh, in a bathroom, any water that's uh, been flushed and is now commingled with various deposits, that's black water. So we, a self-contained vehicle has to be able to, to contain gray water so that you're not spilling it all over the place. And more importantly, has to be able to contain black water so that you're not sharing your body with the rest of New Zealand, so. Yeah, we, uh, the app also included areas where you could dump the things, the gray water and the black water, and then refill up your water um, tank in the vehicle. So that was really important because New Zealand, a few years ago, just were overrun with tourists who were not careful and didn't yeah. conserve and really left a large um, mess to clean up. Yeah, so it's really important that you bring in and take out what you um, what you have, and so you're you're not really disrupting the beautiful nature and the things that you're able to experience. Yeah, a common phrase you might see on signs posted in wilderness areas: uh, we said. Uh, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Yeah. And so the idea is to uh, really don't, don't disturb the nature, but enjoy it.
in preparation for this grand trip, knowing that we were going to New Zealand, I started reading to the children The Hobbit. Um, in fact, Theo, our middle child, decided he was going to do the audiobook, the dramatizations of the entire Hobbit and the entire Lord of the Rings series. But we did that in preparation for coming here to see some of the places that the films were actually filmed and produced. So uh, here on the North Island is Hobbiton, the actual set where uh, they built it for Lord of the Rings, they tore it down, and then when they wanted to, to film The Hobbit, they decided, hey, let's make this a tourist attraction. They went back to the farmer's land, rebuilt, and they've kept Hobbiton in place for tourists to come and see and pay money and ogle and drink a good beer. So we took a tour and it was awesome seeing all of the little hobbit holes and the attention to detail that Peter Jackson did was incredible. I guess at one point they were, he wanted plum trees, but plum trees don't grow there. And so they picked off all of the leaves of, and the of fruit, an actual fruit tree, an apple tree, and then they like put back plum leaves, plum leaves and plums, like incredible detail. So you can just tell that this land, I mean, you definitely felt like you were in the movie. It was incredible. Yeah. Super cool. It was just a great introduction to coming to New Zealand and being excited about all of the beautiful scenery we were going to see. And then we uh, were able to touch base. I had a girlfriend that I've known for years um, that when after I finished UCLA, I lived with her in Colorado for a couple of years, um, kind of stayed in touch through social media. She still lives in Colorado, but her brother and his family lives in the North Island of New Zealand. So we got to hang out with the Garrison family and they so sweetly let us spend the night outside, um, outside their house and play with their kids and cooked us some yummy meals. So it was really fun to connect uh, with them and to hear a little bit more about what it's like to live there, um, not just be a tourist. So that was very cool. One of the decisions that we made when approaching New Zealand was we like nature and we really enjoy the remoteness and the wilderness aspect. So uh, the South Island is a whole lot more remote than the North Island. Uh, there were some things that we really wanted to see, but we chose to shorten our time on the North Island so we could spend more time on the South. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. I was, again, quite pricey to be here and during high season. So we definitely had a shorter time here so we want to make the most of it so we were able to just spend a few days in the North Island seeing some really top touristy places and then taking the ferry over to the South Island to slow down a little bit yep one word for you bioluminescence a lot of syllables but if you've ever seen a firefly that uh, little bug that flies around somewhere back in the Midwest of the United States you have seen life that just glows like it's a little bitty flashlight. Out here uh, in New Zealand, particularly on the North Island where we were, we visited the Waitomo Caves, which has a glowworm. If you're a child of the 80s, you might remember those little glowworm bugs things. That was oh, a yeah, the toys. little snuggly toy. You squeeze it and it, it, lit, it, up. it lit up and it might even you know, sing lullabies or something. But it was one of those things that uh, you, know, you see commercials for and it was like, oh, it's cute, yeah. They actually exist. I mean, they're not snuggly. They're kind of slimy, in fact, and they hang from they're threads. They're really small. They're really small, but they make a cave look like you are looking out at a, a beautiful Stars. starry starry evening yeah. with no moon. It was incredible. It was really neat. And then we got to see caves and, and go through the tour. You're not allowed to take any pictures inside, so I did take a 
some video of some pictures that they had at a kiosk to give you an idea but it was totally incredible just seeing all of the tiny worms glowing it was really cool yeah and because the cave was uh, formed by a river um, you actually for a time get to go on a boat and yes. they they have a rope system where the the pilot pulls Oops. pulls you along and you just see the amazing glowing worm colony that's up there on the ceiling it was beautiful and then from there we just made our way down to wellington which is at the southern tip of the north island and it is the most adorable um sea town city it's pretty packed she, she in liked it a lot. i loved it a lot we found a, uh, we were free camping in the marina area with all the boats and um we, it was just a really cute town. You could walk along the pier area. They had a couple of parks that we um, saw. Just, it was really cool. There was a lot happening and people were out and it was a beautiful day. So it was really cool to be able to see that city. Yeah, and it just so happened that while we were there in Wellington, we discovered a screw in one of mm -hmm. our tires, yeah. our, our back tire on the, the rental van. The night we free camped in the marina. Uh, but the company we were with is Juicy and they happen to have a center just five minutes down the road. So we drove over there the next morning, dropped off the van. They they took us uh, to, to the museum, to the the museum that we're gonna go to anyway. And uh, they fixed the tire. We went to the museum. They picked us up later. It was awesome. So kudos for them. They did a great job of customer service there yeah. in Wellington. It was awesome. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. So we didn't miss any of our itinerary and we were able to just kind of spend the day, which actually worked out well because Wellington's parking is pretty rough. So we didn't even have to worry about parking because nope. they were ferrying us, you know, back Sh and shuttling, forth, us. shuttling us back and forth. Yeah. So it was perfect. And then we also in Wellington is Weta, which is one of the biggest movie production um, companies. They have several different companies in one area. And so Weta is in charge of a lot of the special effects and costumes and weaponry and all of that for, they've done Hobbit, they've done Lord of the Rings, they did Narnia. Um, they kind of had their hands in a whole bunch of different movies, but they're most popular or well known for, for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So we got to see a lot of cool things and just amazing artistry that these people create in order to have realistic um, props for movies. Yeah, the, the, the costumes that were made, the uh, actual armor, all those things were made uh, by their artisans there in, in Weta, and we got to do a tour and see. Um, largely, it was it was based around the uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies because that's probably what they're most well known for. But Weta has been involved in movie making since the '80s, uh, maybe even before that. I forget, but like something like 60 movies, so a lot yeah. bigger than than what most people would know them for. And then from there, we just caught the night ferry over to the South Island, which was a cool experience just driving into the belly of the uh, ferry and getting to hang out on top and see lots of wildlife. We saw a shark, a couple of dolphins. Oh, we saw penguins. Penguins, jellyfish. So lots it was, of jellies. it was almost like a mini cruise worked into a ferry just getting to the South Island, so. Mm -hmm.